Hello and welcome to the first episode of a video series known as Military Mutterings, where I, Jack Fletcher, and my good friend here... Yes, me, Kevin Johnson. ...shall be discussing many different and rather unique military vehicles throughout mm. history, including armoured vehicles, aircraft, and also naval vessels both submerged and not submerged. So, this first episode, to get us started on where it began with armoured history, for example, we shall be discussing, well, the first true tank, Little Willie. Now, Kevin, can you tell me... What... What makes Little Willie actually run? Yeah, um, what was the engine in this thing again? Yeah, it was like a 105 horsepower or something, the something. Dana Petrol oh, there it is, yeah. horsepower engine. Now, how fast could this thing go? Well, this thing can go at a staggering speed of <clears throat> 2 miles an hour, which is 3.2 kilometers an hour for us metric people. Indeed. Like, can you, can you, uh, how fast does something like a Mark 1 go? Let me quickly look that up. Like to put it in comparison. Yes. Okay, a Mark One goes up at a top speed of six kilometers an hour, which is three point seven miles an hour. So this thing is even slower than a Mark One. <laughs> yes, this is not the walking man's tank, this is the shuffling man's tank. This is the crawling man's tank. <laughs> yes. Or if you're doing little roly polies across Flanders fields, which may actually be a more efficient mode of transport. Now Developed in August to September of 1915 for the Landship Committee, this vehicle was supposed to be able to solve the issue of be of trenches and that they were very difficult to cross. I mean, you had barbed wire, machine guns, and rather angry people with grenades and moustaches, for example. So this vehicle was meant to be able to combat that. Now, a requirement was that it should be able to cross a trench of a, um, you know, a, uh, you know, a rather a rather wide trench. It should have been capable of crossing a five foot wide trench and being able to mount a four and a half foot parapet. However, this was beyond the capabilities of this tank. And, well, what it did show us was that a tracked armoured vehicle was, well, possible. Uh, Kevin, what, what tracks did this thing use? And this thing used two different type of tracks. Let me just, like, the first version used the, was it American-made Bullock tracks? Yes, from Chicago, I believe. Yeah, like, a, an easy way to identify these is, like, the, the return rollers and just all the wheels of the tracks are very exposed. Mm. But later, I forgot the name, but which, which were the other tracks? Like, the little Willie that currently is standing in the Bovington Tank Museum has those tracks. Yes. So we got the Bullock tracks, that was the standard. We shall call them Bullock and Not Bullock. There we go. That makes things easier. <laughs> I so. had them right here in front of me, but yeah, we, yeah I guess we can go on. Also, yes. like about the, the trench um, capabilities, it was five foot, you said. Mm, so that that'll be one and a half meters. Yes. Just for the other uh, people. So that's basically, well, no, that, that's more than me. Oh, sorry, sorry, less than me. Jesus, can you imagine how small it would be then? Mm. Yes, the issue is it just wasn't actually capable of crossing these trenches. Yeah, I like the solution like the, some of these early tanks had, where it's like, oh, well, the, the, the tank has trouble crossing it, so let's just add a big wheel to the back of it. Yes, <laughs> just... or alternatively what the French did, and let's give it an overhang. It totally won't get stuck. Spoiler alert, I mean... it kept getting stuck. It's a simple solution to a problem, instead of having to redesign the whole thing, I suppose. Oh yes, this is true on the fact that it could bring rather adequate firepower. And uh, here we see what the, what the vehicle looks like with its rear wheels. 
that these were put on to aid with steering and for stability reasons. Now, mm. this large armoured box had 10 millimetres of riveted armour. That <laughs> might not even protect you against some small arms fire, to be completely honest with you. You know, you you be you, you can probably keep out pistols and maybe rifles, but that's about it. Like, you're not going to keep out oh. things like grenades or machine gun fire, really. Doesn't doesn't something like the fifty cal originated from World War One? So even something like that, a heavy machine gun, will be able to penetrate that armor. Yes. Yeah, so Plus, it's uh... it's a it's a really big box. Aside from the wedge on the front, I suppose, but the rest is just a box so <laughs> yes and that wedge difficult. and that which i highly doubt is capable of ricocheting a 77 millimeter field gun that were <laughs> commonly used in the latter parts of the war for tank hunting so in Ooh, terms i of... found it hold on oh? i found it i found the track so yeah and so the first tracks. one has the bullock tracks and here's i don't know how accurate this is but here some people describe the original name of the vehicle is the Lincoln Number no. One machine, and people like to use that name to refer to the one with the bullock tracks, and then the uh, the name Little Willie, people like to refer to with the one with the Triton or the Triton tracks, mm. and those are the tracks that are currently on the vehicle. Like those, those are the better improved tracks. Yes. Now, aren't they I... the aren't they the same tracks used on something like the Whippet? Uh, like the I other World War One thing, I, they look very similar. Yes, I don't know, but what I can tell you is that Mr. William Tritton, his assistant, was a man named Walter Wilson, and Mr. Wilson himself uh, went, uh, who was a uh, Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve officer. Well, uh, he went on, uh, being rather displeased with the solutions offered by Little Willie, to design the um, rhomboid. Um, the rhomboid shape that is so familiar with the World War One tanks that we know and were mass produced, like the Mark I, the Mark II, etc. Mm. All the way up to the very late vehicles like the Mark the Mark Seven, the Mark Eight as well. Um It it continued on for quite a while. Yes. The whole now, Mark series. This had a proposed five man crew. So you've got five burly blokes going at two miles an hour in a hot stuffy <laughs> box, basically. Well, isn't isn't it like one or two of those will be engineers just maintaining the engine, mm, like go, going likely. off of what were one sort of standard? So you've yes. got a driver, probably one or two engineers. That's three already. Yes. And then I suppose some machine gunners as well. Mm, perhaps yes, it was. Um... Now, actually, we'll get into this now in our final slide. Armament. Oh. This Let's is this very early. Started. As you can see, the <laughs> actual vision ports for the driver uh, weren't actually um, cut out yet, so this is very, very early. And this is the proposed dummy turret. It wasn't rotating. You could not rotate this turret. And this dummy turret could house a 40mm Vickers Maxim pom-pom, which I believe were found on the naval ships of the day, correct? Yeah, they were mostly used on naval vessels actually but there have been i think there were some prototype testing on them uh, for ground uses as well so li like this one yes and it was also proposed that it could use up to six hotchkiss or lewis guns or vickers machine guns you know anything like that if it was a machine gun they would want this to be used <laughs> now, i've even seen certain sources using matson machine guns so just any machine gun you can think of you can yes, just slap if it's it in a here. machine gun, you could probably use it on this. <laughs> Some sort of a German MG? Let's, let's go. <laughs> yes. Now, the final um, point I would like to raise is that that vehicle, and I shall go back a couple of slides, this is a very, very lucky to have this vehicle still in existence because it was almost scrapped in 1940, could you believe? Yeah, that is a, such a shame. Mm, like, yes. isn't this the oldest tank to date to be preserved? Yes, it is I the think, oldest tank to date to be preserved. I think there have been some other sort of tractor slash tank vehicles that have come before yes, Little there Willy. Is one from Little 19, Willy. There is one from 1909 at the Bovington Tank Museum, incidentally, where Little Willy is today. Yeah. Yes. So, um, 
You know, a rather intriguing machine never entered service, only one prototype built, still exists today. And... I must say, though, like about the armament, the 40 mm pom pom, that is quite substantial for one of the first tanks. Yes. But now... Even though the pom pom is more like viewed as an anti aircraft weaponry, it is still a very capable autocannon, if yes. maintained properly, with like about 50 rounds to 75 rounds a minute. Yes, and keep in mind that tanks after this used your more slow rates of fire um, cannons like the uh, like the six pounder, uh, which is yeah. a fifty seven millimeter gun used on naval ships, and the uh, French used the um, used um, seventy five millimeter guns. They also used thirty seven millimeter guns and machine guns. And if, if you go to something like a. Yeah, the Ger uh, later, like, isn't that the K Wagon or something? It mm, was proposed yes. for the 75, like, field howitzers. Were they 75s or were they 77s? 77s, actually, now that you bring it up. Mm, yeah, but those are basically field guns, so. Yes, yeah. but the K Wagon was more of a mobile fortress than a tank. Ooh, maybe a nice little topic for a future video. Yes, perhaps. Speaking mm. of, I believe that it's uh, time for us to wrap up the first episode of Military Mutterings. Do you have any notes you would like to add on to the end of this, Kevin? Not really. I must say, if you ever get the chance to go to the Buffington Tank Museum, do so. Seeing this vehicle in real life is very, very nice. Yes, and the primary source used for this uh, video actually came from the Bobbington Tank Museum, and I personally used the Tank Book, the Definitive Visual History of Armoured Vehicles, uh, from the Bobbington Tank Museum, uh, written by... if I can find it... A whole bunch of historians, if I remember correctly. Indeed, one of them being, uh, one of them being the curator of the Tank Museum, David Wiley, I believe. Um, ah, here we go. Uh, project art editor Katie Kavanagh. Odd name. Uh, project editor <laughs> Hugo Wilkinson. Senior designer Stephen Berry. Said that wrong. I know it. The senior editor Andrew. S Zudek and many other individuals involved, but just know that um, the ah here we are author and consultant of the um, of this book was David Wiley, the curator of the Bovington Tank Museum. So then hmm. we just wasted two minutes going over hard to pronounce names when it was right in front of us. Ah, oh, awesome. Yes. Well, as, as it should be. I think we'll uh, wrap it off here. Unless there's anything else you want to add. No, I got nothing to add to this, do you? Ah, uh, no. No, I do not, actually. Tune in next time, where we shall be discussing, uh... Well, we'll surprise you. Thank yeah. you for watching. Goodbye. See ya.